Hey, welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett. Thanks so much for listening today. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, check out the podcast, whether you're just curious about a ketogenic diet or maybe you're having some weight loss struggles. Maybe you have uh, questions of a more technical nature or maybe just looking for some inspiration. Hopefully, we'll be able to help you. Um, I don't often give my quote-unquote qualifications, but uh, occasionally uh, at the beginning of a podcast, I will because this may be your first time finding me. I'm a guy that's been overweight my whole life, started gaining weight when I was uh, before kindergarten, really, maybe four years old, Um, pudgy, then chunky, then fat, then obese. Um, At my height, well, I actually weighed more than, uh, I think my largest weight was maybe around 420, but when I began trying to lose weight, I weighed 410, and uh, subsequently uh, tried several different ways of losing weight, from products to uh, plant-based, vegan, raw, uh, and then ultimately wound up on a ketogenic diet, and then more recently, I incorporated a keto, uh, well, it was ketogenic diet, then keto and intermittent fasting, and now I use three tools, keto, intermittent fasting, and long-term fasting uh, in different combinations. I've lost 125 pounds, so I still have a ways to go, but um, uh, those are my qualifications. Uh, I can't tell you the hundreds of hours of research I've done into uh, you know health and weight loss as well. All that being said, I'm not a medical doctor. I have no formal medical training. Uh, nothing I say today is intended to be medical advice for you, and nothing I say today is intended to be specific weight loss advice for you. Uh, for uh, any weight loss regimen or it, health issues, you should always consult a doctor. Anything I say is simply my opinion and my own personal experience. So I hear this a lot and um, I've looked into it some and I had somebody ask me yesterday, a a very sweet young woman asked me yesterday about her and her husband are both doing keto and he's having so much more success than her and she wanted to know why it's, why does it seem like it's easier for men to lose weight than women? And um, so I decided to do a podcast about it. I'd researched this to to some degree already, but I decided to put a little bit more time into it and do a podcast on it. So here we go. So I would say the first and foremost reason uh, that, that it's harder for women to lose weight than men is because women are biologically designed to carry extra weight. Um, women bear children. And as a function of that, they need to be able to carry excess uh, body fat. So uh, women's hormones are different than men, and women biologically store fat much easier than men do, generally speaking. Um, So just from a a biological perspective, it's going to be more difficult for women to lose weight than men. I'll also say part of the problem is I think a lot of women have an unrealistic expectation of what a healthy weight is for a woman. Um, they see these really real thin women that are supermodels and uh, uh, things, and they think that that is a um, you know the most helpful state they should be trying to achieve. When in reality, um, and, and in my opinion, in a more attractive woman, of course, everybody's different. But an attractive woman is a woman that, that has a healthy weight, but they but you're going to have curves, you're going to have hips. And, um, you know, you're just going to have curves and, and you're just biologically designed that way. Um, but I would say the image that you see, the image that's promoted is, uh, and if you look, you'll see this, the, the, the women that are, pr- are promoted in media, whether it be television or print or whatever, generally don't have a lot of curves and the the curves they do have comes from their their waist just being extremely small compared to the their hips and their hips are defined not so much by any level of fat it just by bone structure um and that's just uh, not a natural state for a woman so um that being said some women are genetically super thin but Uh, I would say it's probably the minority and women are just designed to carry more weight for childbearing reasons uh, and others. It's just, it's a biological thing. Um, It's hormonal and that's just it. 
So since you're prone to carry more weight, your body defaults to that. So it's a little bit harder for you to get your body off the default fat storage mode. Um, Having said that, the process is pretty much identical between men and women. It's just going to be more difficult for you. And uh, a ketogenic diet for somebody who has metabolic dysregulation, you know, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, etc., um, so the process to recover from that is the same. That would be a keto diet uh, mixed in with intermittent fasting and uh, maybe even extended fasting, but especially a ketogenic diet first. Uh, add on to that intermittent fasting second so you extend the time that your insulin is at a low state so it allows your body to access fat stores and burn it. The other two reasons um, I think are probably uh, – well, one of them I think probably applies to every woman, but it's less as important, but it's still a factor. And then the second one that I'm going to tell you will probably only apply to some women. I'd hate to I hate to give broad blanket statements about women as an entire group because everybody's going to be different. Um, but I I think this is generally true. So if you're listening and this la- and the last one doesn't apply to you, just know that it probably applies to a lot of women you know, and you and you're in the I would say in the minority. So, um, obviously a woman has a cycle and, um, I, me and most men and uh, everybody, men and women can testify to the, uh, uh, way things change as the cycle approaches and you go through the cycle, etc. But one of those things, um, at the beginning of the process and, th- th- and th- you know, through several days of the process is, um, uh, increased, uh, eating hunger and cravings. And, um, again, this is just a biological thing for women. And so, you know, how many days out of the month this craving overeating period is going to be is going to vary by woman. It could be one day for some women, five days for others, seven days for others. You know, I, uh, it's, she's gonna, it's going to depend on the woman. But invariably, someone who is, you know, doing having an active cycle and you're young enough, you, have, you haven't passed that age. You're going to have that, and so uh, it makes compliance harder. So, again, going back to what fixes it is the same. It's just from a compliance standpoint, it's easier for a man to comply because we don't have this one to three to five to seven days or whatever of uh, more intense cravings for food. So it's simply a – it is a willpower thing. There's a a little bit more willpower involved, and so that makes compliance go down. And so for some women, you can kind of chalk up, you know, one-fourth of every month, 25% of every month is going to be an extra hard struggle for you um, that the men don't necessarily have. And so um, uh, that would be, the, in my opinion, the secondary factor. Uh, the third factor is just something I've noticed, and I did some Googling on it, and I was able to find um, actually more information than I thought I'd be able to find about it. Um, it was kind of was a theory I had, and I believe I heard something heard, heard somebody make this remark about a year ago um, in some uh, presentation I was watching, uh, a video presentation I was watching. And it just kind of popped back in my head, and, it's, and I've noticed this personally, but women... As a matter of fact, this is funny. Uh, my best friend uh, is uh, is a woman, and it's actually an ex. And we dated a long time ago, t- two thousand and one. So it was a very long time ago. But I was actually talking to her on the phone today, and we were discussing, uh, you know, some of her idiosyncrasies. But the way she orders, uh, even at a drive through, is very complicated. Man, <laughs> she wants things customized and changed. And you go into a restaurant with her. You never go into a restaurant that she, that she orders straight off the menu. Everything has to be customized and changed. Um, that kind of falls in line with what I'm saying uh, here with this point about women and weight loss and, and their relationship with food. Women like variety in food, um, much more so than men in general. Now, again, this is a generalization. There's a percentage of women that probably don't give a crap about variety too much. And there's also a small, you know, a percentage of men who probably do want a lot of variety. But I'd say the vast majority of men don't care that much about variety, and the vast majority of women do care that much about variety. So I know me personally, I can eat the same thing for days and weeks, and I often find that I do. I'll I'll fall on something that I like, 
and I'll eat it every day or nearly every day for one or two or even three weeks. Um, and then things will start changing a little bit. So then my, my variety thing kicks in and maybe I'll change one or two things or change three things. And then that, that'll be what I eat for the next week or two weeks or three weeks. Um, but then when I come back around, I'm probably back to the same thing I was eating that first two or three weeks. So, you know, I probably really like a grand total of about 10 things <laughs> and they just, you know, I'll eat three or four of them for a couple of weeks and then add one and drop one. And, the, and that's how it goes the next two or three weeks. You know, women like variety. And uh, again, that's a generalized statement. So if you're listening and you're a woman and you're like, I don't like that much variety. Well, I would say you're in the minority as far as women go. And if if you're a man that's listening and you go, I do like a lot of variety. Well, of course, that's possible. Um, but I would say you're in probably in the minority of men. So if we've established this as being something that's likely true, why does it matter? Well, <clears throat> there's a there's a a biological process programmed into us to help us get um, all the vitamins and nutrients and minerals we need. And it is a function of variety. And as a result, uh, our taste buds respond when we have a variety of flavors and textures, but primarily flavors. So if you're having a wide variety of flavors, you can eat more food. Now, if you don't believe this is true, um, sit down to a meal tomorrow, cook you a, the, get, go buy the biggest T-bone or biggest ribeye steak you can buy, and you're just going to lightly season it. Maybe just lightly season it with a little bit of salt so that it's not uh, fresh tasting. Uh, cook it so it's cooked very nicely, and sit down with that big old honking thing, and that's all you're going to eat. You just eat that steak. That's all you're going to eat. You'll notice pretty soon into that steak that you're you're feeling full. You just, uh, you're like, I don't know how much more of this I want to eat. <clears throat> you may not be able to finish it. You may not be able to finish half of it. When you eat what's called a mono meal, a meal that consists of just one flavor profile, you uh, pay much more attention to your actual hunger signals and you recognize that you're full a lot faster. You just, you, you are done with eating much faster. When you have a variety of flavors in a meal and you're switching from food to food to food, you can just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating and it completely bypasses that uh, fullness trigger. So I'm going to give you a good example of this in case you doubt that, in case that seems like that's stupid to you. One trick these uh, guys that go for these records of eating um, the you know twenty a thirty two ounce steak or eating the most amount of this food or the most amount of that food or whatever, one of the tricks that they'll use is quite interesting. So let's say it's the uh, and this is the example I saw and there's actually a video of this on YouTube. And I used to have it saved in a playlist of mine, and I, I went to look for it so I could get the guy's name and give you the name of the video so you could go see it for yourself. And uh, I guess I've deleted that playlist, or maybe that video's been deleted off YouTube. I couldn't find it, but I've seen the video. Um, and then I actually read about this phenomenon or this trick these um, uh, you know these eating competitors do. But the video I saw was this guy, he was one of these guys trying to eat this, I think it was a porterhouse, and I want to say it was 32 ounces or 48, I don't know, it was some huge, insane amount of meat. And he had eaten this thing, I think he was about one half the way through, slightly less than half the way through, and he could not eat anymore. He was done. Stuffed, like, uh, literally like he was about to throw up, he couldn't eat anymore. His solution to that was to eat more food, but it wasn't more steak. He asked them, it was in one of these restaurants, he asked them to bring him an order of fries with extra salt. So they brought him salty fries. He ate like six, seven, eight of those fries, washed it down with a little bit of drink, and tore right back into that steak like it was nobody's business and ate it till it was about two-thirds of the way. He had to stop, took a drink of something, ate eight, nine, ten, twelve of those fries, Got that salty, different flavor, different texture in. Rinsed that down and went right back into that steak and finished it. When you 
mix up your flavors, flavor profiles in a single meal, you can eat way more food. Uh, It interrupts or disrupts your fullness signaling uh, apparatus uh, mechanisms in your body. And so, again, you can try this. You can uh, go get you a... uh, uh, um, a meal that isn't multi-flavored. Uh, my be- my best example would be steak, but there could be other things. Uh, but I think steak, uh, hamburger meat would probably work. Um, but just something that doesn't have a complex flavor profile to it. In other words, you aren't combining salty with savory with sweet, etc. Um, because that's what's on most plates. That's why uh, you know. That's why you can get the. Um, the rice and vegetables and sweet and sour chicken and eat 85 pounds of it. <laughs> you're getting a little bit of the savory there. You're getting some of the salty. You're getting some of the sweet. Um, and you're just going back and forth. And you have all these flavor profiles. And you can just eat till the cows come home. So um, I encourage you, if you want to try that experiment, try it Try it tomorrow. Try it sometime that's coming up week. You'll see that it's true. And the one way that I know this is true, because I experiment off and on with a carnivore diet where the, all I eat is meat. And um, I've wanted to try it for 21 days or 30 days or something, but the most I've been able to do it strictly carnivore um, for is, you know, a few days in a row. But I, but that was, I learned that very quickly. Um Steak is a rich man's thing, and I don't like to cook too much at home. So if I have steak, I go out to eat it. So my meals are would be mostly burgers um, when I do this. But uh, you get full really fast. Uh, I cook up two burger patties, and by the time I'm through with the first one, I'm like, I just don't think I want to eat that second one. But now, if it, they were actual burgers with the side of fries, I could I could chow through two burgers, you know, with the buns and all the fixings and stuff with the side of fries. I could tear through two burgers and fries with no problem. But just two hamburger patties, just lightly, and I just lightly season them with some salt, just a dash of black pepper, and that's it. Uh, no. <laughs> uh-uh. One of them I'm stuffed, and I'm like, man, I've got to eat that other one. It is tough to get through that second one. It just, it's a, it's a mono meal, and mono meals are very hard to, to, to pour through. So, um, that would be the last reason I would say it's harder for women to lose weight than men. I could get into other things like uh, I think muscular structure has one thing to do with it, but I, I don't think that's quite as much. It's probably you know, maybe one or 2%, but, you know, men generally have more muscle mass than women. And the more muscle mass you have, the higher your uh, metabolism is. So you burn a higher rate of calories on a daily basis. Um, But I would say it's just, you know, it's just a couple percentage points. So it contributes, but it doesn't contribute much. Uh, The primary thing is the hormonal thing and the natural tendency of the female body to storage to store fat as it was designed to do it. That's not a mistake. The female body was designed, it was created to store extra fat because of the function of, of the woman's body. So um, given that that's the default, uh, it's very hard when you when that gets too much. You shouldn't carry too much, too, too much fat, but you should carry some extra fat because that's, that's just what being a woman is. And you can still be you still be slim and in shape, but you're just going to carry extra fat. It's going to provide those curves. Um, and so when it when it gets out of hand, it makes it all that much harder to you know uh, back the truck up, as it were, put it in reverse, and get back to where we need to be. Whereas for a men, we don't have that biological component, and so it makes it easier. So I hope that helps you, ladies, understand why it's easier for your husband. Um, but I would say this, you can't let that discourage you because there's just, there's literally nothing you can do about it. Um, the only thing you could do about it is, is get testosterone injections and change your hormonal profile. And I don't think you want to do that, <laughs> you know? Um, but if you, if you got on some testosterone and upped it and stayed on a testosterone therapy, uh, you would have all these hormonal, internal hormonal changes that would, uh, alter your physiology to be more like a man and it would, and, and it would make things easier. 
Uh, but I don't really think you want to go there. That's, that wouldn't be very wise. So what do you do? Well, you just accept it. Accept that it's going to be longer for you. Accept that you're not going to lose weight as fast. Just accept that it's going to be slower, but also accept this. Accept this, that you don't have to lose as much weight probably as you think you do to be at a healthy and attractive. And notice I put healthy first. Healthy is the most important, healthy and attractive weight. You're probably wanting to lose too much weight because a woman naturally carries weight and looks gorgeous because a woman is designed to carry just a little bit of extra fat in certain areas. So know that you probably don't need to lose as much weight as you think you need to lose to be uh, amazing and know that you certainly don't to be healthy. So that take heart in that and then take heart that even though it's slower, it's still the same process, just just accept it. Don't whine about it. You know, you can't complain about it. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's just a, it's a little bit extra obstacle. And just know that your victories are just as impressive as your husband's or your male friends or your brothers or whoever you're comparing yourself to. Know that your victories are just as impressive as theirs. You know, so he lost five pounds last week and you only lost one. <laughs> That's huge for you. You're one pound lighter than you were. Um, you know, whatever victories you take, you get them. And uh, that makes them all that much sweeter, right? All right. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope that this podcast has helped you in some way. Subscribe to us on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. The username is Fat Guy Podcast. And you can find the podcast and subscribe to it pretty much anywhere you get podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts or the Google Play Store. If you're familiar with all that kind of stuff, just uh, search for us and you'll find us, Fat Guy Podcast. And if you don't understand all that stuff, you can download a free app. It's a Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. That's the company I host my podcast with. Download their app. It's free. Once you download it, search for Fat Guy Podcast. Hit the heart button, uh, like it, follow it, subscribe, and not only will you be able to hear all new episodes, you can scroll back and listen to all previous episodes. The most important thing you can do is share this on your social media. Share it. You don't know whose life you'll change. You just don't know. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you next time. I hope that we've helped you in some way.